Very few people envisage Ferrari making an impact at the Singapore Grand Prix, but the team left a venue it was expected to struggle at with a pole position and a 1-2 finish. Just how did it manage that? Crucially, Ferrari made a number of changes to its SF90 for Singapore to turn the tide, starting off with a new nose. By fitting a cape section onto the nose and extending that between the mounting pylons to create a pair of nostrils, Ferrari was able to generate more front-end downforce. The inclination of the nostrils leading edge forces airflow passing underneath to take a longer path and it hence accelerates. As a result, it develops a stronger low pressure region underneath, boosting overall downforce. The cape itself also produces downforce while also improving the interaction between the underside of the car and the barge boards. Those capes were pioneered by Mercedes in 2017, aiming to improve the front end and squeeze more performance out of the barge boards. For this season, they've been a popular addition, and that seems to be a result of the reduced front wing complexity. Mercedes and McLaren began the season with a cape section added to the nose, with the latter boosting the transit of airflow underneath the car with a trio of nostrils. Renault, Alfa Romeo and many more teams have joined the club, aiming to glue on some more front-end downforce and improve the handling response at the front. And in Singapore, that's absolutely crucial, as the plethora of 90-degree corners require a consistent feeling during turn-in. Ferrari's further upgrades contain a new floor and a new diffuser, the new floor featured the fins along the slots along the edge, seen several times this season. Those fins helped to boost the outward direction of the airflow moving on top of the floor, assisting the slots with their endeavour to seal the floor and maximise diffuser performance. Ferrari has trialled this floor numerous times in practice sessions earlier in the season, and it seems after a lengthy period of perseverance, it has finally been able to make it work properly. It's important to note that Ferrari's success in Singapore definitely didn't come overnight. It was, in reality, set in motion a number of months ago. Having struggled early in the season on circuits with a high downforce requirement, Ferrari underwent a lengthy internal review to work out how best to turn over a new leaf with its SF90. Back in France, a new front wing was the first tentative step to working out whether the new development path could be successful, and it showed enough glimmers of performance to prove that it was worth the effort. Although high downforce performance was still poor prior to the summer break, with Ferrari the third best team in Hungary, it continued its work. It was always expected to perform well at Spa and Monza, where the low drag aero and high power output played right into Ferrari's hands, but Singapore was a litmus test of performance. Knowing that the key to a good result was in qualifying, Ferrari put Vettel and Leclerc on setups more suited to that than to race pace, where it knew that it could hold up the pack, as overtaking is notoriously difficult in Singapore. The car was also able to cope with the bumps and curbs in Singapore nicely too, suggesting that the vehicle dynamicists had built a good level of compliance into the weekend's suspension setup. Although Leclerc's pole position was scruffy in places, and he even admitted to almost losing the car two or three times on his lap, he set the scene for Ferrari to clinch unexpected 1-2 finish at a race that was billed as a battle between Mercedes's Lewis Hamilton and Red Bull's Max Verstappen. Singapore ultimately was a perfect storm for Ferrari, but the key to truly turning around its 2019 season rests in Sochi, a circuit at which only Mercedes has ever won. But it seems Ferrari has a very real chance to break that monopoly.